I have to begin my talk with a confession. I am the coffee science manager, and I don't like to bake cakes. What does this have to do with coffee? Well, as a science manager, my job very often is about thinking small, measuring things, and being very precise. But believe it or not, that's not my natural tendency, <laughs> hence the confession. Uh, maybe this is why I'm not an analytical chemist or a chemical engineer. Uh, I am actually a trained ecologist turned dangerous coffee generalist. So I really don't do well with these uh, very convoluted recipes that require every pot and pan in your kitchen and every measuring device you have and overnight planning and cooling time and all of this precision in order to create a beautiful layer cake. This one, a German chocolate cake, is one of the worst offenders of this. Do not bake this cake at home. <laughs> but all of this is really why I loved working on the new generation coffee tasters flavor wheel. Let me explain. Now, the new flavor wheel and creating it was a really large endeavor. One that took scientists, it took industry, and a lot of collaboration. And in the end, creating the new flavor wheel was really like baking a cake. Why? Because we ended up needing three different recipes for three different parts of this new wheel. The first was a recipe for the cake. <laughs> the cake is like the flavor attributes or the words around the wheel because it, the words are really the substance of the whole thing. The structure is like the arrangement or the organization of those words around the wheel. And the icing on the cake, it's like the design and the color and the visual representation of all of the scientific research that went into this new tool. Now, you all are familiar with the original version of the flavor wheel. It's been an industry staple for over 20 years. And the SCA knew that if we were going to reinvent the wheel, we needed to do it right. We had to ask ourselves how we could accurately and respectfully reinterpret this classic that was developed 20 years ago. So we knew we had to look to the experts. First, we needed an expert for the cake. <laughs> the first part of the recipe we needed was for the words and the terms that would go around the flavor wheel. The real catalyst for the new Coffee Tasters flavor wheel was the World Coffee Research Sensory Lexicon. And WCR, or World Coffee Research, WCR started this project about three years ago to create a sensory lexicon. And it had to do with their plans to do a lot of coffee breeding in the near future. They understood that in order for them to stay true to their mission and to address the issues that were important to the specialty coffee industry, they needed to be able to quantify the flavors of all these lines of coffee that they would use for breeding. And in order to do that, they needed appropriate vocabulary and a way to quantify that. So they engaged with the world-famous Sensory Analysis Center that's located at Kansas State University. Doctors Edgar and Dolores Chambers are the primary investigators at this center. And they led a professional taste panel, shown here, to create the lexicon. And they did this with standard methods in sensory descriptive analysis. This panel tasted over 100 coffees to determine all of the possible flavors that they could find. In the end, the lexicon is essentially a list of flavors. So you can see some of them here. And the lexicon includes the flavor name, the definition of that flavor, and references for us to calibrate on that flavor. So what the lexicon did was create the recipe for the cake, but it didn't tell us how to structure the new flavor wheel. 
We needed to know more about how to organize these terms around the wheel, both in tier, from the inside to the out of the wheel, and also in a 360 degree orientation. We needed help understanding how these flavors were related to each other and how we should group them on a flavor wheel. So we looked to a second group of experts for the recipe for the structure of the new wheel. Now, we knew we needed experts that would think creatively while doing solid scientific research. We went to UC Davis. UC Davis has a world-renowned reputation for sensory science research, as well as the Robert Mondavi Institute, shown here. And with the SCAA's ongoing relationship with the Coffee Initiative on campus, we went to the Food Science and Technology Department to see if any labs would be interested in working with us on this really unique project. Lucky for us, Dr. Jean-Xavier Guinard and his lab, including his PhD candidate, Molly Spencer, who's here today as a fellow, decided to work with us on this project. I hope all of you get a chance to meet Molly and talk to her about the work that she did with us and encourage her to do more in the coffee industry. So Dr. Guinard and Molly went to work to devise a very creative solution for our issue. And we, as the coffee industry, uh, told them that we wanted to do two things. We wanted to figure out how to organize the wheel, but we wanted to include two groups of people. We wanted to include the sensory descriptive experts that were trained panelists, and we also wanted to include the coffee industry because the flavor wheel is a tool for us, right? It's a, cool, it's a tool for coffee tasters, and we needed to have input from coffee tasters to do this right. So they helped us to devise a method that would work with those two populations. They helped us create a method to basically create a sorting of the flavor attributes. And they developed a modified free sorting method to accomplish this task. Now, in a traditional free sorting method, descriptive panelists, usually a small number of them, will evaluate a group of products sensorially, and then they will categorize them, and they'll physically group them based on how they felt that those products were similar or different. And they'll do that multiple times until they feel like all of the iterations of that sorting have, have been finished. So Molly and Dr. Guinard work to modify this method in a few ways. One was that, uh, well, we weren't actually sensorially evaluating anything, right? So they modified it so that we would be sorting the words or the terms around the wheel uh, that are all part of the flavor lexicon. They also modified it so it could be an online platform. This is shown here, and they did this so that our coffee community could participate in this research from all over the world. It was also a great way to collect data. And finally, they eliminated the multiple sorting part of this method because we had 99 flavor attributes as a part of this sorting exercise. And it just wasn't realistic for us to ask the participants to do that more than once. In the end, all of this data is quantified in a proximity matrix that basically puts a number on how many times each of the study participants rated these flavors as being closely related. And what was awesome is that after the data was compiled, they ran some statistics on it, and they found that the trained sensory panelists and the coffee industry groups could be added together into one population, because statistically, they didn't really answer the questions differently. So they sorted all the flavor attributes in such a similar way that we could put them into one group. After this was done, they ran a couple of different statistical analyses on the data. The first is a hierarchical agglomerative clustering analysis, or AHC, and that creates a dendrogram. And the dendrogram helps us understand how the words were grouped together by all the study participants. And it does so in a way that shows us the main groups 
and also direct close relationships between each of the attributes. So to orient you on this graph, on the y-axis or the vertical axis, it says similarity. And it goes from about 0 to 70. And that's because there are 72 people in our study population. And what it means is that if you have a low number in similarity, that means that a low or a small number of people rated those attributes or that group of attributes as being closely related. As opposed to when you go down to the bottom of the graph, closer to 70, it means that almost all of the study participants grouped those attributes as being closely related to each other. Finally, uh, you'll see all the attributes going across the x-axis on the bottom, all 99 of them that we used. And at the top, horizontally, you can see there's a little dotted line. And that dotted line is the delineation of the nine major classes that broke out of this dendrogram. And they're in different colors that are pictured in the graph. Those nine major groups created the nine major flavor categories on the innermost tier of our new flavor wheel. Another way to look at this is through a multi-dimensional scaling analysis, or MDS. And it helps us visualize how the sorting went based on a two-dimensional graph <laughs> depicting the, the relative relationships between these different attributes. You can see they're all listed on the scatter plot. And this graph was really exciting for us because it was the first time that we could start to visualize how a 360 degree wheel might look. For example, the roasted group, which is one of the clusters that broke out of the dendrogram, all clustered together over here. And the fruity group clusters on the other side. So we use this MDS analysis and this visual of the data in order to figure out relatively around the wheel which attributes we might put closer together versus further apart. So those two graphs are cool, but there's a lot that needs to happen between those graphs and a flavor wheel. So what we had to do is go through each flavor category and figure out a way to translate that information into some kind of a tiered system that we could put around a wheel. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of examples of, of what that looked like. This is a segment of the dendrogram for the nutty slash cocoa group. And the first circle you can see is where that group initially split off from all the other nine major flavor classes on the dendrogram. So that was one of the major groups around the flavor wheel. And then it splits into two secondary categories, which are, not surprisingly, the nutty group and the cocoa group. And finally, uh, at the bottom of the graph and the third tier of this chart, these are the specific flavor attributes that clustered underneath the nutty group and the cocoa group. And this is how it translated into a segment of the flavor wheel. Here's another example with the fruity category. Again, you have the initial split from all of the other major flavor classes on the dendrogram, and that's the whole fruity group, followed by, in this case, four secondary categories that became our sort of umbrella terms for the middle tier of the new flavor wheel. Berry, dried fruit, other fruit, and citrus fruit. Followed by, finally, all of the specific flavor attributes that broke out underneath those umbrella categories. And here we are again. This is how this work translated into a segment of the new flavor wheel. So we had all the science, <laughs> and uh, we had the words, and we had an organization of those words. And the final part of the recipe we needed was the icing, or the visual representation of that work. So we looked to another group of experts to help us for the design of the project. We hired the UK-based firm One Darnley Road as the, the design team on this project. And they worked with us to accommodate all of our needs, our science, uh, as well as their creative vision to create a beautiful product out of the new coffee taster's flavor wheel. They devised some very important visual cues to help represent what we found in the lexicon sorting study, such as these gaps that are part of the wheel. They're built in. 
with large gaps in between the nine main segments of the wheel, followed by small gaps that represent when our study participants grouped some categories as being slightly different than another, and then there are other instances where there is no gap, and that generally would mean that almost all of the people that participated in the sorting study grouped these attributes as being very closely related. The design team also worked on the color very intentionally for each attribute, and they did that by doing these color surveys online, where for each attribute, they did a search of images and then picked a color that was most representative of that flavor. So really, the colors are meant to also help the coffee taster use the wheel really intuitively. Finally, the new version of the coffee taster's flavor wheel was completed. It took three different recipes from three different groups of people, and it was a big effort. But, you know, it was, it was a necessary effort because the SCAA is committed to its membership and the entire industry to engage in an increasingly data-driven and scientific approach to everything we do. And certainly, the Coffee Taster's Flavor Wheel has been an integral part of our community and how we evaluate coffee for 20 years. We had to give it the correct methodology. We had to give it the due diligence that was really necessary for a revision that was such a change for us. So the wheel is designed to be simple. It's supposed to be intuitive. After all, that's why we asked many of you in this room, I hope some of you actually participated in the sorting study. It's meant to work from the most general categories out to the most specific. The wheel has a solid foundation in scientific research. And a great advancement in that is the WCR sensory lexicon where each attribute has a definition and references that we can calibrate on as an industry. And the wheel standardizes language. It creates a new generation of flavor language for us as an industry. The wheel and the lexicon, they, ch they have changed the terms around the wheel. And you know, as an industry, uh, some of these are unfamiliar terms. Some of them are even kind of weird, but that's okay. Uh, as we use the wheel and as we grow familiar with the definitions and references that are part of the lexicon, we are going to grow familiar with all of these terms and they will become as ingrained in our vocabulary as all of the terms that were part of the original wheel are. So <laughs> let's use this new tool. It's meant to be a resource for us and a new generation of vocabulary around coffee. Let's be proud of all the scientific research that went into this project, and let's appreciate all of the expert collaborators that contributed to the recipe. Thank you.